Shalom Israel, this is Sister Kana and um, I wanted to do another part to the love and marriage um, segment that I, I started. And but first and foremost, uh, let me give all glory and praise to Ahaya, Bahashim Yeshaya, Wakwadash Rawak, and Kal Halal, Wa Halala, La Ahaya, Bahashim Yeshaya, Wakwadash Rawak, and that's the ancient Hebrew, um, giving all glory and praise to Ahaya, Bahashim Yeshaya, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, now um, I wanted to speak <coughs> to. Um, I wanted to speak about love and marriage again, but this time it's going to be a little different. I'm going to vary off into another uh, another aspect of love and marriage, and I'm I'm pretty sure that it, this may not sit well with a lot of people, and uh, I just needed to really say that because, um, you know, I, every you know it seems like everyone you know wants to be politically correct and say things that you know people will be happy with or you know makes everyone happy and sometimes the truth isn't isn't that and um, so I'm uh, you know but this has been on my spirit for a long time and even a couple of months ago I had meant to speak about it but I didn't you know e even me I didn't want to really ruffle any feathers and I didn't want to kind of get into it and I wasn't really sure if I you know, I, if I was correct in saying this, but I, it, it's come up again, and every time it comes up, it's like I know I need to speak about it, but I try to run away from it, but I can't do it anymore. So I'm going to speak about it, and it's it's basically about um, mixed marriages and um, interrelation, you know, interracial relationships, which is a very touchy subject because. Um, you know, from what I'm hearing amongst the it, most of the Israelite community is basically two things. Either you have the, the Israelites that feel that there will be no Gentiles, that Esau and, you know, the white man will not make it into the kingdom, you know, type of doctrine. Or you have the doctrine that Gentiles are allowed into the kingdom and that they will be with us. And so, you know, it's those are the two main you know talks amongst the Israelites but what I'm finding and as I'm reading in the scriptures and getting understanding from the Most High I believe that there's a thin line with the Most High because I, I do believe that the Gentiles will make it into the kingdom is scripture you know the Most High said he will take out a remnant for his name amongst the Gentiles as well so they will be with us they will serve you know in the kingdom and you know some of them who will that they will serve a higher and that's no dispute about that but the thing is that should, in, in regards to love in regards to relationships should we interact with the Gentiles and I don't in my opinion and what I'm getting from the scriptures is that no we we shouldn't and that it's actually a sin against the Most High and so most people like to say, well, what the Most High brings together, let no man put asunder. You know, don't no one can come between what the Most High brings together. But then you have to think about, did the Most High bring you together? And we were under captivity, under curses. We wasn't serving the Most High, no way or form. We were worshiping Satan. So when you, everything that we were doing was against the Most High. He hated everything we was doing. So can we validate marriage in that as well? And that's what I want to speak about. And I think that Israelites will have to reevaluate what they're doing. The men of the Most High. Because if it in Most High hasn't changed. He's the same Most High. And although Christ came to fulfill the law that the Most High implemented... Christ didn't come to change anything and we understand that so when it comes to relationships these mixed marriages and every marriage that every marriage is not ordained by the Most High you have to understand that because for one you got the Gentiles participating in homosexual marriages now is that ordained by the Most High no and so you know if people 
people have to be mindful of what they're doing and how it relates to the Most High. We have in the scriptures in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 10, that whole chapter is speaking about the men of Israel realizing that they had sinned against the Most High. And they made a decree to put away their wives, of the, the wives that were str strangers, the, the Gentile wives. And there was many of them who was taking on these wives. And they realized that it was against the Most High. And what did they do? They made a decree that they put them away. Now the reason why I'm I, I, I'm really bringing this up and I really you know need to feel that it needs to be discussed is because you most of you know that I'm working on building the tabernacle so I'm trying to you know I'm going into the laws in regards to how the tabernacle should be built and what I'm finding is that every we will be separated as you know each tribe as a nation will come together but each tribe will be separated and everyone has their own every um, tribe has their own position within the kingdom and so you know as an Israelite you know brothers I, I think you should really uh, take into consideration your position because the Most High when it comes to the tabernacle he's very funny he don't even allow, allow Gentiles into the tabernacle and he has certain laws even for us as Israelites on whether we can come in and, and be, you know, near it or go into it and things like that. But when you're married to a Gentile, the Gentiles are not even allowed to go in. So if you're married to a Gentile woman and do you realize that your seed, that seed, even though you are Judah and your child is Israel, but the bloodline becomes tainted. And so, so much that your child won't even get a part of the inheritance. Do you realize that? I mean, when you read the scriptures and the, the scriptures talk about, you know, the men that was chosen, the men, the certain, you know, the Levite, the priest, the, um, the ones who were chosen, not necessarily Levites, but like Moses and Aaron and Noah and Abraham and David, you know, all of these was of, of the lineage of Judah. And it's usually the pure lineage. You know, even if like when David took on other wives, like you never hear anything of these, these, um, the lineage of these people, you know. His, you know, the seeds of these, the wives of strangers, of the Gentiles, you know. They really not even considered. And so men, brothers, you have to realize that, you know, the Most High is the same. He, the re there was a reason why he told us not to taint our bloodline, okay? And so when we get into the wilderness again and we in the tabernacle and we're dealing with the tabernacle, the Most High, is he's, he feels a way about certain things. So you can't taint the bloodline. And so, brothers really is going to have to go into that scripture because it's not, the, the scripture says what the Most High brings together. Now you have to look at that, what He brings together. It's not just because two people come together, because you have to know whether that person is for, of Canaan, Canaanite bloodline, which we know um, linked in with the, uh, the Neph Nephilim and the, all, all the other blood, all the Gentiles. The Most High was not pleased with them, and we could not deal with them. And so now, because we was under captivity, and that we um, we did deal with them in our captivity, now that you know the truth, you can't just overlook that. And you can't just sweep it under the rug and, and say, oh, what the Most High brings together, let no man put us under. Because the Most High didn't bring you together, because you was in captivity, serving another God. So the God that you were serving, actually, you know, what what brought you into that covenant? You wasn't in the covenant under Ahia because he wasn't, you know, dealing with us at that point. Now I'm not saying that um, you know, you know, I'm 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 drawing a line here because I'm saying that back in the day, in the time of Ezra, they were they had to put away these Gentile wives because it was against the Most High. So what would you think to do today? You know, and I'm not the type of person to just push stuff under the rug. And I, 
I'm not afraid, although I don't want to offend my brothers and sisters. That's not the intent. But I do want you to, to, to um, reevaluate and do things and consider a higher. Consider the most high and his word and what he, he wants us to do. Because what may be inconvenient for you may be the will of the most high. And he may be testing each and every one of us. Just like for me making this video right now. You know, I didn't want to make it because I don't want to go and have to deal with, you know, brothers and sisters, you know, you're disagreeing, the disagreeing spirit on it. And it's like, oh, so what you saying that people got to divorce their wives? Mm, yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of so. Like our brothers did in time of Ezra, they had to put it forth a decree that the brothers could not come with women who were strangers. They had to put them away. Why? Because we're going back under the law. That's why. And that when we go in that tabernacle, it's not allowed. And you even have to consider the women, women who are supposedly Judah. Because really we, know, we don't know. And I know we're not supposed to strive in geniality. Because Christ will do that. But you, you better understand the laws, statutes, and commandments, and the ordinance of Ahia. And these are one of them. And so how can you say, oh, we, you know, we, can't, we can do this, this, and that. Oh, but we can't do that. That's not what our forefathers did. Our forefathers made a, a decree that they had to put away the, the Gentile and the strangers from, from among them. Because it was a sin against the Most High. And I know that's a hard decision. But listen, how can you claim to have to judge? The Most High said, don't you know you will judge the angels? And we're supposed to be judging rulers over the other nations. But yet you can't judge righteously amongst yourself. That you can't make a decision in fear of offending those who may be offended because they, you know, they want to stay where they are. We all have to pull up when it comes to the most high or higher. And the things that are not pleasing to him, we have to do away with. Because we're going into this wilderness and we, he's going to deal with us. He's going to deal with us. So if you fear him, if you fear the Most High, then you would think to do the things that, the, the, put away the things that's not pleasing to him. All of the things. Not the things that, you know, oh, well, we don't have no control. You do have a control. And um, I just have to put it out there. I mean, when you go, I'm going to read a little bit of the scripture just so that, um, you know, there's really not too much anybody could say, you know, about it, but it's the truth, you know. Ezra 10 verse 1, it says, Now when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping, and casting himself down before the house of Ahiah, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And uh, she Shechaniah, the son of Jehel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our Ahiah, and have taken strange wives to, of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now therefore let us make a covenant with, with our God Ahiah to put away all the wives.